I've been noticing that Texas is a mighty big state. Yes, Texas has 167 million acres and 29 million people and more arriving every day. And with our size comes lots of diversity. Texas has many different regions and vegetation types. Yes, Texas's regions vary in soil types, they vary in temperature, they vary in wind and precipitation pattern. And it's these variations that create the, the different forest types and the residences, the plants and animals that make up the state's biodiversity. So the forests in Texas come in all different shapes, sizes, and ages. Y también la gente. At school, I learned in a report that Texas is the second most diverse state in America. Yeah, it takes all kinds. Are you ready to go learn more about trees and forests and all the benefits they provide? Yes, but I have to go to school right now, so I'll join you online when I can. Okay, see you, Lucia. All right, well, let's start from the start. Texas Arbor Day. And to help us learn more about Arbor Day, I'd like you to meet my, my good friend, Angela, from the Texas Forestry Association. Hi, Joel. Hi, Angela. Arbor Day is an interesting holiday. Historians trace the origin of Arbor Day back to the fifth century when Swiss villagers planted groves of oak trees. The parents made it into a festival and gave the children treats to thank them for their help in planting the trees. Well, Arbor Day was celebrated in the United States in 1872 when J. Sterling Morton guided uh, legislation through the Nebraska State Legislature, uh, a resolution for Arbor Day. And people began to recognize the benefits the trees uh, had on them, and so the tradition began. And in Texas, Arbor Day began in 1889 when W. Goodrich Jones, who also founded the Texas Forestry Association, gathered his friends and neighbors and started planting trees along the streets in Temple. One year later, an Arbor Day celebration uh, was conceived and later a law was passed designating a, a day to encourage the planting of trees. This day is so cool, but I'm so confused. If you're supposed to be planting trees, why are people cutting them down? Isn't that bad? Oh, hi Lucia. Actually, the wood industry sometimes gets a bad rap when it comes to our relationship with trees. Most of the criticism comes from people who don't really understand the industry or how we acquire the wood that we use to build things like houses, furniture, and paper. Texas Arbor Day is a good time to talk about using wood from trees. After all, Arbor Day, the vision of Arbor Day is to inspire people to, to care for and nurture and celebrate trees. And, and who, who wouldn't, wouldn't be, be on board, board with, with that? that? In fact, when one tree is cut down, two and a half trees are planted in its place. In Texas, millions of trees are planted annually. Commercial forestry companies are responsible for planting about 83 million trees per year. Growth of the Texas forest exceeds the harvesting by nearly double. What are you doing? And get out of here, we're learning about trees. Oh. Learning about trees, huh? Well, you know where the uh, Southland went to get his education? Where? <laughs> Elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Josh. <laughs> you know what the Southland's favorite subject is? No, what is it? <laughs> Geometry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Josh. So actually, Lucia, trees can't live forever, but by using the products, we can continue to benefit. Products that you use every day, such as the lumber to build your home, the books you read, the shipping boxes that are on your front porch. These are all products that could come from Texas forests. We were just talking about forced products. 
But do you know there's lots of other benefits that come from forests? I'm stumped. What are you talking about, Forested Joel? Yeah, it's kind of easy to understand forest products, but what I'm talking about is when a, a tree is still standing in the forest. Do you know that trees that are standing in the forest provide habitat for wildlife, homes for wildlife, they provide shade, they provide clean air, clean water. We call those ecosystem services. Forests clean the air we breathe? You're right, it says here that trees help keep our world clean and healthy by filtering particles out of the air, decreasing the risk of respiratory illness. That's correct. In fact, trees provide... And it says that forests and trees clean up toxic pollutants in water through a process called phytoremediation. mediation. That's true. And forests and also... And forested watersheds have lower bacterial concentrations in streams and rivers, helping prevent us from getting sick when we swim. Right. And trees also... Forced control. Did you know that shade from a tree's canopy can reduce temperatures by up to 20 degrees? making it safer and more comfortable to be outdoors. I did. That's kind of cool, don't you think? Hey, Joe, looks like you're hard at work. My dad used to <laughs> work hard grinding up trees and branches. He was always a chipper guy. <laughs> mm. Speaking of working hard, you know why the tree took a nap? Forest. <laughs> Forest. <laughs> Get out of here, Josh. Forest. I'm waiting on Lucia. <laughs> Lucia. Hi, Forrester Joel. Am I late? No, you're just in time. I heard it once said that the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The second best time is right now. So let's get started. We've already chosen a tree and a location, and that's a big step before starting. This species of cheese has been known to thrive in this part of the state, and it's good for a temperature and soil type. That's right. It's called right tree, right place. So kind matters. And we've verified that this is a good spot by looking, going online and looking at our tree planting guide. And we verified this spot because it's far enough away from the building. It's not around power lines, overhanging power lines or underground lines. So this is the spot we've chosen. That's the first thing you need to do. I have a little rhyme to help us with right tree, right place. Right tree, right place for height and space, good soil and trees for growing trees. All right, good job, Lucia. We can't just plant what's right. We gotta do what's right. Let's just show everybody how to plant a tree, okay? Yes. All right, let's get started. All right. You know, Lucia, forests need genetic variation for good survival, for sustainability, for just good health, really. Biodiversity protects the forest from insects, from diseases, from natural disasters, all kinds of things. So diversity is really good. We call this biodiversity. It ensures us that our tree, like the ones right here, will become the healthy forest of tomorrow. Give me some of that. So just like one tree contributes to the biodiversity of a forest, everything is connected. So the trees, people, forest, ecosystems, if we take care of the forest. By planting, by managing. Then the forest will take care of us. Yeah, no, it'll give us clean water, clean air. It'll give us all those ecosystem services that we've, we've talked about. So the forest 
kind of connects to everything. That's right. Cities have buildings, they have streets, they have electrical grids. Trees are critical to our infrastructure to give us a good quality of life. That's why I think communities should provide trees for all neighborhoods and districts so that all people can receive the benefits of a tree. And not just for community leaders. Forests are for everyone. Forests have many faces. Forests have many uses. Forests have many benefits. And it takes all kinds. Y están ahí para todos. To learn more about trees and forest, go to the internet and log in to Texas A&M Forest Service website. <laughs> log in. Ha, 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 ha.